Hey, everybody. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is the show where I deconstruct top entrepreneurs, their businesses, find out how they did it uh, so you can have an edge in your market and in your business. Now, let me ask you something. Uh, have you ever wanted to make, have you ever found a tool where you could, one, build new relationships with influencers in your market, use that same tool to mine your database, and then get those same influencers to endorse you to their database? Well, there is. It's called a podcast. And, guys, you should start one. I can tell you that the people who are first movers and doing a hyperlocal podcast are going to kill it. Um, if you're interested, go check out Viralcast, who is sponsoring the show, Viralcast with a K. Um, hey, today's show, um, if you're new, by the way, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you dig the show. Uh, here's what we do on the show. Um, I bring on entrepreneurs. Now, these are we talk about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. Um, so we talk about how they build their business. If you don't sell real estate, that's fine. No worries. Um, we have painters, plumbers, pie makers that listen to the show. Um, today's episode, I bring on the duo. Now, these guys are have hit the market, and they are crushing it. Last year, they did 500 deals. This year, uh, or, or, or I did this in the summertime. Um, but that's okay. Listen, don't, even though it's, I, I, I'm only releasing it now, all the content, all the stuff we talk about is just as relevant today as it was then. Um, uh, 2014, they did 500 deals. 2015, they were shooting for 750. Uh, and they're just crushing it. And we talk about how they're doing it, how they are on the kind of growth spur and, uh, and speed that they are doing. We talk about scripting. We talk about how to build your business where it is an actual, not a business, but a company where you only do the stuff that you're good at, right? You want to make 400 bucks an hour? Well, you know what that means. You need to be the prospector and or negotiating deals. And that's all you should do. Everything else outsource, right? Don't put signs in the ground. Don't try to mess around with your website, you know, stuff. Um, just focus on the stuff that is dollar productive. Um, we talk about how to, if you are a buyer's agent or you mainly mess with buyers, how you transition and become a listing agent. Um, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Before we get to the content, just a little bit of housekeeping here. We always do it. Uh, I'd love to meet you on Twitter. We have an active uh, following, active community there. Join the conversation. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Super Agents Live. The hashtag for the show is Unpack That Idea. You are not going to want to miss future episodes just like this one. So you know what you do? You get on my list. How do you do that? Go to the site. Uh, get on, download my free ebook. Uh, join the member group. It's all free. Um, oh, one last thing. Hey, listen, you know what? We all need help from time to time, right? Coaching. And I'll tell you something. I don't want to say it. Don't tell, don't tell all the coaches I've had on here, but you know, I almost feel bad about saying this. Look, I think coaching and I kind of like lower my voice here, but I think most coaching, I think it's a racket to be totally honest with you. It's a racket. When you make me sign up for a 12 month relationship with you and you get my credit card up front. Uh, you know, and again, you make me sign the contract like that's pretty rackety, right? Um, I should be able to quit whenever I'm not f seeing value from you. So um, but we do all need help. Go check out uh, school of uh, That's our little coaching thing here. We had our call. We have our calls on Thursday. Uh, and today um, we brought on for the first part of our call. We brought on uh, Mr. Pat Hyben. Um, and he, you know, the five million dollar man, and and we, and we dug into, we, you know, everybody got to ask him questions. All right, that's it. Let's get to the show. Today on the show, really excited to have a duo. I, I don't do duos that often, so we have we have two partners on the show. Now let me give you some background. So last year, 2014, 
Uh, they had a team of 35. They did 533 transactions, 101 million. This year, they're on a growth spurt. Uh, they have 50 team members. We're recording in the first week of July. They've already done on the books, close pending, 465 transactions for 95 million. They're projecting 750 tr- tr- closed transactions. I'm thrilled to welcome Greg Erlanger and his partner, Mike Zinicola. Hey, guys, thanks for taking the time out hey. today. We're happy to do it. So listen, you know, you guys, I love having number ones. We've had a bunch of number ones on the show. You guys are the number one KW team in Ohio. Before we get to how you've built your business, I'm always curious about about you, right? Who Who is Greg? Who is Mike? So maybe take a minute and each of you guys give me some background. Tell me just who you guys are. Okay. Um, this is Mike Zanacola. I... Uh, practiced law until 1999, and every day I went into work and hated what I did for a living. Just decided to make a switch. In 2000, I became a a realtor, and I built my business through significant personal networking. networking. I I took divorce attorneys and the state attorneys out to lunch for the first six months of my business, and I was able to build a, a pretty large referral base from that. I set a record for my local regional company for first-year agents, so I knew it was a good midlife crisis. And um, I, uh, every year after that, I just grew. My first year, I did five and a half million, and went up from there. Wow! In, and in 2004, Greg came to the same office, and he can tell you about himself. Yep. I uh, graduated from Ohio University and worked in corporate America for ten years at AT and T doing corporate data sales. Um, so my background was really heavy in technology, uh, but my passion was I was investing in real estate. I was buying a multifamily home and realized that that's what I was really excited about, helping people build their net worth um, through investments of real estate. So I got into real estate and immediately uh, then broke Mike's record with my first uh, at a regional <laughs> company, my first year hotel. With Mike's e- help. Yes, with Mike's help is what he's in. Hey, no, and my ego could handle that. So I, I'm okay with it. Yeah, so, so Mike and I kind of um, partnered up on some opportunities, and uh, what we found was um, my, and I basically came into the world using technology uh, and my technology background, um, but needed his experience and knowledge, and we realized as we were partnering together um, that, you know, there's probably a long-term benefit of, of, uh, of coming together, um, but we were still at our a, a different brokerage, and uh, I'll continue on as we decided to um, uh, jump to a different brokerage, Keller Williams in this case, and they really encouraged you to hire your weakness, so we decided to partner with our weakness, and that's how we became the Erlanger Zinicola team, which is the E and the Z of the EZ sales team, mm. where you take the technology background or the experience, and what we in our market, you can hire one of the realtors typically. There's somebody that's either stronger in the technology or there's somebody that's stronger and have been a realtor for 30 years, experience, you know, the practice of, of real estate, et cetera. But you can never really hire the, both. And that's the value proposition we were able to provide right out of the gate. And then from there, we grew and succeeded from there. So, Got it. Well, so, you, look, it's interesting, you know, so you guys are two strong personalities. It's interesting that, you know, uh, Mike being uh, very much a, um, a personal, you know, he's a, he's a relationship guy, right? And you, you being right. a tech guy, you're kind of farther away from that, that relationship. I'm sure you use technology to, 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 uh, to build those and nurture those relationships, whereas Mike is, you know, belly to belly. Again, two strong personalities. Both you guys are very, very talented. Why? I mean, it just seems like, you know, you guys are, you, you won records for year one. What, what made you guys think that, that uh, uh, building a team, you guys would be stronger as a team than, than going out on your own? Because Greg and I really did this, I think, the right way, at least for us. Okay. Greg and I, after doing some projects together, sep- we were separate, but we did some projects together. We really we realized we could work together. When we came together as a partnership, we really divided and conquered mm. instead of just becoming two people following each other around. So by by coming together, Greg could concentrate on the marketing and and and. And everything that's involved with with the internet as it relates to real estate, I didn't have to worry about any of that. All I had to do was worry about the practice of real estate, which is was my strong suit. So as we've grown, 
everyone on the team knows that if you're talking about marketing or the internet or lead generation, you're, you're off to Greg. Everyone on the team, when they have a problem with their deal, when they're trying to hold something together or, or there's that last negotiation point they can't get through, I get to step in. So I don't have to worry about any of what he, any of what he does, and he doesn't have to worry about anything what I do. And because of that, we're strong. Going into partnership with someone that has your same strengths, that you're just going to go on listings together, I don't know. I don't know. If, I mean, that may work. That wouldn't have worked for me. Yeah. Having someone who's my total opposite al- allows both of us to, to grow. I always say that I am not as good a real, real estate agent as the easy sales team is a good real estate team. Mm. And it's the combination that creates the success. So our egos were thrown out the door. This was about selling houses, making, making money, and doing very good things for our clients so that they refer us back out and we make even more money, which is why we've been able to grow. Got it. Okay, perfect. That's a great explanation. Um, so, so, you know, one of the things that I see you guys have done from the beginning that, that, you know, and this is, this is one of the traits of a top producer is that they, st- they come out, they, they start their business as founders, as CEOs, they build it like a business. Whereas the people who flounder, they don't do that. So I, I want to, Mike, I'm going to throw it back to you really quickly. So you, you know, you had this background in law and, and you started off, you know, with what I would th- seemingly look at kind of a low cost, high yield approach, right? You went out, you found, you, you niched down to div- divorce uh, law, you know, built relations with the guy, right. took those guys out to lunch. Um, how long, Mike, did that take you uh, going out to lunch with these guys uh, before you started to, to, to see um, some traction? Not, not, not very long at all, actually. Hmm. I, I, I was able to, because I had my law background, I, I certainly went into those lunches with a little bit more credibility than someone else might have. And so uh, I was getting sort of immediate results there. I also come from a very large Italian family where everyone's in Cleveland. So, um, so I had a lot of personal connections here too. So I was able to build my database pretty quickly. And when I came into the practice, I thought of every group that I knew or or was affiliated with, I wrote them all down, and then I took every each group, I said, how can I get a hold of these people? What vehicle do I need to use for my old high school classmates? Because a lot of times people just want to have some sort of bond. If they don't know a realtor, if you went to high school with them, that's a good enough hitch, a good enough uh, thing to, to, to get you in the door. So I made a list of everyone I knew and, and how, how I'd get a hold of them and how I would market myself to them. And so I was able to move pretty quickly on that because I went into it with a business plan. Got it. Okay. Now, now, I mean, what, uh, going back, you know, your big family and Greg, we're gonna get to you in a minute, but for you, Mike, you know, you, you, you know, going to law school is expensive. Going to law school, you know, takes some time. You know, what, what you know, being, uh, I'm sure you're, you're, you know, this big Italian family, your mom was super proud of you. My son's a lawyer, right? You know, people want their sons to go be lawyers or doctors, right? So you, you're a lawyer. Um, did you get any pushback from going, hey, why are you, you know, you, you went from one of the highest bars of, uh, you know, to, to get past being a lawyer, and then you, you, you go and be a real estate agent, which it's, there's no barrier to entry there. Did you get any uh, Well, I, I, so there, there's, there's a couple of things. Yes, the day I told my, my family I was going to stop practicing law to be a realtor probably wasn't the happiest day of their lives. However, the truth is, is that everyone knew that I didn't like practicing law. And I'm not saying law is, not, law is an awesome profession for many people. It just wasn't for me. And it didn't take long before I had success in this for everyone to realize that this was a great move for me. Got it. And so thank, I, I really do thank God my father lived long enough to see me succeed. Good, that man. Was, that, was, that, was, that was important to me. But, but anyway, yeah, so and, and now people don't think of it. And now people, most people assume that the fact that I have my law degree is just uh, extremely helpful and gives me an, uh, a competitive advantage right. when, I'm, when I'm negotiating, when I'm working through struggles on deals. And so the team also knows that. And so the team comes to me for all of that. So my law degree does not go to waste okay. in, in real estate. Do you think when, when you are negotiating with, with, you know, somebody, somebody, you know, you're number one guys, right? So, you know, you, when you right. go to the negotiation table, uh, Mike, do, you know, and you, and you go, listen, I'm the number one team in this state. 
you know, and I have this law degree. I mean, is that, is that, can you intimidate people, you know, with that or, and do you use that to your advantage? That's the awesome thing about it. The best way to do it is the exact opposite. Huh. The best way to do, the best way to negotiate is to come with the most knowledge. When you, when you're practicing law, the person who has the most knowledge normally wins. So, most of negotiations are based upon my having more knowledge about the house, my more, having more knowledge about the market and the comps. And to do it in a way, well, I could talk about negotiations for two hours, but to do it in a way that isn't blustery and, you know, just like a bull running through the China, the China shop, yeah. but rather to provide the information necessary to keep everything pleasant and to keep it in a way that that people respect my position and realize that it's coming from a sincere place. And when they, when you do that, you're always more successful. Remember that show was on HGTV about that one guy who did all those. It was, it was only about negotiating. And he was a big hard nosed guy and, and they could only do 12 shows a year because what they didn't show is the other 97 times it didn't work. So, learning how to negotiate properly and not being that guy who stands up and leaves the room and does all the theatrics, but rather coming from a strictly a standpoint of knowledge and I know more than you, which is why I'm going to run the show. That's how you, that's how you negotiate. That's interesting. That's very interesting. If you ever want to talk about negotiations, on another call, I'd be happy to spend the whole time. Yeah, I would love to do that for sure. I mean, that's, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you know, I recently had, I, I brought on the head of the FBI negotiation hostage unit. This guy was the head of wow. it for 12 years, got him on the show, and that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about you know, how you take control of a situation from a, neg- a, a negotiation standpoint. And to be honest with you, man, I didn't get very good co- – I have not aired that episode. I did not get great content from him. Um, and I'll tell you, I'll, Mike, if I was in your situation, if I was in your shoes, I think I would – I'm different than you. I, I think I'd be playing the wolf of, of Cleveland, the Ohio role. I mean that's, the, that's what I'd be doing. But anyhow, hey, so, so Greg, let's jump to you real quick. So let's, I want to talk about you know, what you were doing um, early on with technology – uh, and how that, you know, and that's going back to 2004, and how that has evolved to now 2015, and, and, and what is working for you in that regard today? Right. So, so again, I graduated in communications. I sold uh, the dense wave, like the, the, the um, well, network connectivity for Fortune 500 companies. So okay. I, was, I was in negotiations. I, it was basically the premier job at AT&T in data sales to where everybody wanted to be. Um, yes, Cleveland has Fortune 500 companies. Um, and, we, and, it, and it was fine. Um, I came into real estate and realized that my competitors are the, that, that, that data knowledge, the knowledge to succeed and, you, you know, and dominate this thing called the internet. And we're talking 10 years ago that no, everybody thought it was a farce. Everybody thought it, you know, I think people knew they just didn't know what to do with it. So my ability to just immediately dominate whatever, uh, area, niche area I wanted to was there. There was no competition. And, um, I just took full advantage of that and built a lot of niche websites, built, you know, mm-hmm. um, made sure that I, you know, worked through all the different websites, some that are still here, you know, like realtor.com and, um, you built that? And all that. No, no, I didn't create that, but I'm also utilizing those as well. I gotcha. So you create your own niche in fact, what I what I did that made me so successful is I built a competitor to Zillow. So instead of us as realtors just shelling out money for somebody else to do it, do it yourself. You know, create your own niche website, create create your own uh, identity on the internet, and you won't need to shell out all the money to Zillow as they divide their zip code thirty eight more times to try and get more money. Right. So that's just my political opinion. It's worked out very, very well for me and for us. And so by not using that as a crutch, I created my own strength and our own solution um, that have really helped us propel. And, and I don't even need to use Zillow if I don't want to. I mean, I, I do here and there just because I feel like I might be missing something. So we'll throw some money at it from time to time. But even that, we're looking to cut out. So at this point, we've got over 19 websites, plus obviously our main site, um, I get a lot of knowledge base from uh, Bold Tech, which uh, has really helped and um, just just succeeded through technology, really. So, so just, and just to add credibility to the, what he just said, and just because I'm the numbers guy of, of the two of us, last year one of those niche websites, the most successful of them, um, was 
what, 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 we, we can receive 42 actual closed deals from one, one website. Well, okay. That's, so, that's impressive. That's super impressive. So, so 42 closed deals. So but for the audience out there, right, who doesn't have that tech background, Greg, G- give us an idea. Give what you're talking. When you say niche sites, are you saying go out and build a, an equestrian website? Go out and build a you know a downtown condo website. What maybe unpack that notion of, of build a niche website a little bit more? Right. There can be different areas, and yeah, and there's a lot of this isn't a, a kind of a new concept. I probably took that for granted, so I appreciate the question. Um, a niche website would absolutely be, um, whether it be just a neighborhood um, or downtown condos, like you just said, or equestrian uh, lakefront. It could be uh, for medical professionals or athletes mm. or um, whatever it is. When somebody long tail Googles something, so um, say they Google, you know, uh, lakefront homes um, or uh, doctor relocation or what have you, don't try to be so broad. The, the place that you can beat the Zulias of the world is by going hyper local and, and hyper niche. Don't don't try to take you know Cleveland, Ohio homes for sale. Try to take you know a subset of a city. Um, let's say like in in Cleveland we have a place called Tremont. So you would dominate the Tremont area. You would talk about the park, which is Lincoln Park. Well, everyone in Cleveland knows that, but Zillow doesn't know that, and so Zillow is not going to work on those keywords. So. Um, you know, if somebody's moving to Cleveland and their friend says, oh, you should live in Tremont, guess what they're going to Google? They're going to Google Tremont condos for sale, and guess what's going to come up? I am, because I went hyper-local. And you can actually jump Zillow and, and, and Trulia and the other guys by doing such a thing. So um, understand that, in my opinion, being a realtor, you need to be an Internet. You need to dominate the Internet. If you can't do that, my opinion is that you're really letting your clients down. It's just a part of real estate that is now here. And the quicker you understand that, you, there's no longer, hey, I don't understand that internet thing. I'm just not going to worry about it, or I'm going to let my broker take care of it, or I'm going to, I'm just going to buy into Zillow. In my opinion, you're you're missing the boat, but that's my opinion. No, I do. I I 100% agree with you for sure. So so you said long tail key, keywords again. Not everybody's going to know what that is. Just a very briefly give give people an, an idea of what that means. Long using a long tail keyword and how. Uh, they would implement it in their business? Well, uh, the users of the Internet have obviously gotten smart, and they don't just type in cars for sale. Uh, They're going to type in, you know, blue Honda Civic for sale in Cleveland, Ohio. So typing that in would be the long tail um, because you're not going to be able to compete with a cars for sale because cars.com, Auto Trader, those guys have already dominated that. They're paying millions of dollars to dominate that area because they have millions of dollars to make. Um, but you can, you you being a local expert can go hyper local and go where they're not willing to go. So, and, and, and so let, let me, let me, let me frick, uh, put some context around. So how people might be able to use these long tail keywords is, you know, you can certainly use those long tail keywords in your, when you, when you put up a listing on your site or two, you know, when, you know, everybody should have a blog, right? In your blog, you know, drop in some of those, you know, in your article and, you know, Google's going to pick that up. Um, and, and, th- right. and this is something that, you know, it takes time. It takes 12 to 18 months for, I mean, this is not, you know, you're not buying traffic. This is very hard earned traffic. Absolutely. That's a great point. I think that's one of the reasons that we've succeeded over other realtors is I'll create a niche website and I know for a fact that I probably will not see any results, any real results for two to four years. And I think a lot of people are expecting, you know, Hey, what can I get sold next week? Right. And so, because, because Google wants it to basically marinate, they want the, they want the domain name to have activity. It wants to grow. Um, it's not going to just let you jump out there and be number one tomorrow. And I think that investment of time, effort, and um, not only do you have to build it, but then there's a whole whole rule set that you have to understand, which is not hard to understand with appropriate training um, of how to, you know, I'll use backlinking because I think people know what that is. It's not very effective anymore, but let's use that as an example. Backlink from one blog, like Blogger, which is owned by Google, which is important, um, and, and backlink to your website that you just created. That's one way to get search engine optimization, but there's about 25,000 other ways too. And you just got to know which ones are the most effective. And, and it's, it's just, you really want to educate yourself on that. So, you know, you can go be a a certified buyer specialist and that's fine, 
But by dominating the internet, you can really make a lot of money and succeed. But I mean, go get your accredited buyer specialist if you want. I, my opinion is rock out the, the internet and, and you'll have. Yeah. No, I agree. I 100% agree. And, and you know, there's you know, you could do this. You can you know, you backlink from your your YouTube channel, right? Your Google Plus page, right? Put all those things dry, you know, put all those things um so so uh, so what and either one of you guys can jump in on this. You know, what is working for you in your this is a very broad question. You know, but what's working for you in your business today? What Working for us? Yeah, what's working for you? Yeah, well, I mean, the fact that we've 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 worked through a lot of this. We are now seven years into this, and so, but we we've had a coach, obviously, who has helped us a great deal to keep us very focused on the important aspects of real estate that will help us build our business. But we've been through a lot. I mean, it it takes a lot to run a business. There's there's administrative staffing issues. There's dealing with your brokerage issues and becoming a big team and then the, the brokerage is less helpful to us because they already think we're big enough. Or So we've, we've already worked through a lot of things. So we are about as self-sufficient as you can be so that we're not relying on anyone else because this is all about sales. And what's working for us is we have a, a team who buy into that process. Our team isn't a group of people who sit around and wait for leads. There's a combination on our team of receiving leads, but also going out and getting your own and, and the two of us helping people become better realtors. And as they become better realtors, the leads will come. So we've had now seven years of really developing a process that team members um, – know that there's more value here than us handing out a couple of leads. Yeah. Right. And, and we, did, we did build our team. We built our team basically kind of around the AT&T model of Salesforce, which AT&T came, you know, was birthed, the Salesforce was birthed from the IBM world, IBM Salesforce. Yep. And basically it's, you know, our concept was always sell another house. We are a Salesforce. I'm not worried about all the other things. I think it's just a focus on numbers. And, and in the end, you know, bragging about yourself is one thing, but when the numbers don't lie, then people will ask you to talk as opposed to you talking before that. So what we want to do is just do a lot of sales, home sales, transact another deal. And being from Cleveland, we like the manufacturing mentality. We manufacture deals, one after the other after the other. They're, you know what I mean? And um, and we just stay focused on – we don't pat ourselves on the back too long. We, we, we focus on our next goal. So I, I'd say goals is what's working for us as well, That's having established – annual goals. There, there are a couple, there's a couple other things that we did when we started. Greg and I both agreed in the beginning that we would not be the Erlanger Zinnicola team or the Zinnicola Erlanger team, besides the fact that seven syllables. Um, having our name on the team name doesn't allow our team members to be first string at the kitchen table. And if you have buyer's agents or listing agents, they're second string. And for the same amount of money, you could hire the, the, the guys with the name on the side. And so that's why we're not the, that's why we're the easy sales team. It's just our initials. And it was just interesting. Um, spec, secondly, we do not have buyer specialists or listings because the last time I looked, when you get a license, you're able to do both. And when your next door neighbor wants to list with you, cause they know you're a realtor and you have to shift it off to some listing specialist. They don't want that person. They want you. So our whole approach is to make sure that our agents are the stars of the show. So when our agents go to a listing appointment or they're working with a buyer, they are a sales partner of the easy sales team. They're not some second string name. And so that empowers them. So they get to say, I'm a sales partner of the number one real estate team in the state of Ohio. That gives them more power than being second string. And it's all about, I mean, it's all about Greg and I throwing that our ego out the door, which is totally fine with us because it's not really important to us. Because the way we, and a, a lot of agents talk about this, but I'll reiterate it. Team leaders need to um, come from a, a, an approach of service, and we have to do what's right to make sure that the person at the kitchen table, because they don't care about Greg and I. They care about who's at the kitchen table. They, we need them to be the stars. And so we, we take the approach that Greg and I are vendors to our, our agents, and our agents are our clients. 
and every day they choose to buy their team value services from the easy sales team. And if we don't provide good value to them, they'll move on to the other teams in the area. And so we think about that each time. And, and we also think that we are clients to our brokerage and that they're our vendor, and we choose to get our, vendor ser- our brokerage services from them. And so we, we take that approach, and when you take that approach, you're always going to be in a situation where your team members know you care, they know that we have their back, and we have very, very, very small attrition. Got it. And listen, I, I, I you know, I love the, the fact that, that uh, I, I'm, okay, there's a lot of stuff that you guys just said that, that I want to ask about. But first of all, uh, Mike, this is, I think, for you, you know, your sales, you, you have sales partners, right? So I got I to gotta think some of that titling you, you took from your, uh, from your attorney days, right? Uh, director, associate, tight, whatever. Uh, so I think that's interesting. But, but look, you guys are two super bright guys, right? You're hard charging guys. Why in the world? And I'm not. I don't mean this in any kind of derogatory way, so don't take it like that. But why? Say whatever you, you want. Yeah. Why do you guys have a coach? And who is it? Why do you? Why do you guys think you need a coach? And but but before you answer that, who coaches you? We we have uh, yeah Glenn well, Glenn Neely from Maps Coaching at Keller. Okay. He's amazing. We were doing twenty million. We did for the first three years. We did twenty million, twenty five million, twenty eight million. And really, we felt like we hit a ceiling, so we thought we'd throw it out there to Maps Coaching, and um, we got, uh, we basically, we got hooked up with uh, the Busy Blondes out of L.A., which is uh, Glenn Neely, and the next year, we did $56 million, and we did $86 million, we did $101 million, and we're on pace to do one hundred, you know, thirty to $150 million this year, and absolutely, the coach... Um, the coach helped out tremendously. It just opened her eyes. It, if nothing else, he's the extra eyes not sitting here every day. He's, he's, just another, he's just another set of eyes that has a different perspective. He has a lot of coaching and a national sales force uh, type of coaching experience. He's just not a realtor. And, um, you know, we, we, we think that he's been instrumental in keeping us focused on things that may have otherwise been tossed aside that have turned out to be very productive. So we, we, don't, we absolutely think that, I think that the, the coaching, even if we are successful, I'll, I'll pay for that coaching as long as I'm a realtor. Okay, so that's great. Okay, what if you, you know, so you uh, were in the mid 20s, you, you felt like you guys hit a ceiling. The next year, you double your, your production. So, so that wasn't a lead issue, right? You, it seems you probably had the leads there. You guys, you know, that was to me, not knowing anything, guys, but when you double in a year, you know, that's a, you had a, somewhat of a conversion issue, I would think, but, and I could be wrong. But tell me and the audience, what was that thing or combination of things that allowed you to literally double your business in 12 months? And we're talking big numbers, right? Adding an extra, an extra 25 million to your, to your production. Yeah, and, and, and the first thing was the coach. I mean, he was the one that was able to look at our business holistically and say, okay, here's, here's the piece part. You know, here's why you're succeeding, and here's where you're stuck. And then he would basically, just like a trainer um, that you work out with, they're going to tell you, you know, in, in, not, in, in not, so fun way, and not such a fun way, here's what you need to do, get it done. And we did it, and he had to, you know, break through a couple challenges. One of them probably was, well, I'm sure was staffing, um, administrative staffing, making sure that the resources were there. I think we were afraid to add more agents because we didn't have the staff to really accommodate that much demand. Um, and then holistically looking at it, you know, if you have a machine that can cut 100 yards of grass, for example, why would you only cut two? It costs the same. The machine costs the same. So cut 100, you know what I mean? So we had the staff. We just needed to add more agents. So we immediately started growing the team as far as headcount. And, um, Two things. One, it's cheaper to make the headcount you have sell twice as much, which we work individually on individual goals, which is what our coach kind of had us focus on. And two, adding more people, um, both of those combined helped us double our numbers. Okay. Okay. And, and so, so is it fair to say that, you know, at the 20 million mark, before you hired uh, Glenn Neely, that y- you had the right systems in place? Did, was, there, was there a system? I'm trying to find out, you know, if you guys can point to sort of just one major thing that allowed you that, that massive growth. You know, I, I think that prior to, prior to our coach coming on and the, dealing with this, I don't think we had a good, very good system of tracking our leads. Okay. I think we had a great system of getting leads. 
And I don't think we did a very good job tracking. Do you agree, Greg? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just accountability and, and zeroing in on what we what we had already created and understanding the value. And of obviously, it. tracking that is is also uh, on the road to more conversions. Uh, and so, so we we've done we've done a lot of that. Uh, we have a group of agents though who come to us for other values other than leads, and they bring a lot to the they bring their own stuff to the table. We help close it. We help market it. Um, so uh, it was also bringing more people on and dealing with their existing business as well as the, the leads that they get from us. Okay. L- l- let's talk about tracking really quickly because tracking is, is r- critical in any kind of business, right? Because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. What, um, what are the buckets that you track today and, and – Specifically, how do you, you know what program software? How do you do that? Yeah, we we've um, well, we've gone through pretty much everything. <laughs> we've we've gone through uh, Wise Agent, Market Leader, Red Tools, Top Producer, I name it. I've been through it. Um, right now, we're working through on Commission Inc., uh, which is a solution that I think really does in- encapsulate everything. Um, most importantly. You know, what we did, um, and this might be good for a lot of agents starting off on their teams and such, is Google, uh, Google Docs, uh, and it's, it's, it's down and dirty, but it works. Um, it's Excel Sheets. We just called it an agent lead capture form, and every time a lead would go out, we would, um, we would CC leads at easy, you know, leads at easy sales team, whatever, and that would go to its own account, and then from that account, we would actually manually put it into an Excel sheet, and then the agent would update on it. Got it. I think the important thing is that the agent knew we were watching now, and all of a sudden, just by the mere fact that they knew that we were tracking this, that our conversion rate immediately started going up, and everybody started to realize that there's absolute value to each and every lead that goes through. It's not just, uh, hey, they didn't call me back. So, right, right, right. Uh, so from, from Google Docs all the way to Commissions, Inc., I mean, there's, there's so many different ways, but I think what you said is most important, and that's just that you've got to measure it so that you can, you know, you, you can move forward. If you don't measure it, you can never manage it. Uh, fix it. So yeah. Manage it. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Um, and what are those things? So, so you guys, it, it, down to what granular level do you track? You know, you're tracking follow-ups, you're tracking touches, you're track well, like how granular do you guys get in this? Well, right now it's fun. It's fun. These questions are fantastic because you're hitting on our biggest weakness as a team, um, which <laughs> is exactly what you're describing, which is exactly why in the next 60 days we're already halfway through the conversion of Commission Zinc. But what we want to do is narrow it down to which website, where did the lead source come from? Yeah. You know, uh, what's the conversion rate of each and every team member? Um, so we're really, we really are focused on, and Glenn, our coach, has been on us for probably 24 months of his life. Uh, to do this. So it's, it's funny that you're hitting all our weakness right now, but um, so I probably wouldn't take too much from us, but we, we understand the importance of it. it. Um, all we've done is um, basically each individual agent, how many leads they've got, and then each person, you know, they just update us on where they are with the different leads, but um, how many callbacks, et cetera. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and then, and then you guys are over, you know, you're looking at all these docs, you're, you know, you're keeping everybody accountable. Do you, do you, you have a big team, man. So is it once a week that you get together with – when you get together with your team, do you do it individually or do you do it in a group setting and how often? No. Well, okay, so a couple answers. One, uh, every, every other week we have a team meeting. We've found over the years that having a meeting every week or every day is, is – then, then you fall into the, the corporate America thing where you're having more meetings than you are actually yeah, accomplishing anything. Right. So we want everybody out on the street selling stuff. The other thing is we don't we have a lot of accountability and we'll meet with folks, but because because the value is more than just lead dissemination, we have a lot of very very good realtors on our team. I mean, we have I would say at least half of them could start their own team, but they don't because of the value provide and they know we're all a team. What that means is I don't really need to make sure Toby is calling people back. I don't need to manage you as much because you're kind of turnkey. You know, you have, you know, so we don't have one-on-ones as much as we should with the 50 agents that we have because that alone would fill up our entire, you know, time. Um, but we do have our good, we have good team meetings. We have a summer picnic, a Christmas party. You know, we try to, you know, keep that cohesive cohesiveness 
um, through those different events. The other part of it is that we have uh, three people on the team who are also mentors to younger agents on the team. Mm. And they do meet regularly with the newer agents, and they actually spend a lot of time walking them through when they're compensated for it, obviously. And so uh, because once you get to a certain level, you, there's just too many people on the team. You can't do that. So the only way for us to grow further is to have mentors who can do that. And so that's how that's how we've been approaching that. And they meet with them more than weekly. They meet with them almost daily in the beginning until they're – until they get going, and and then and that's how it works. Okay, so that's good. So I, really quickly, because I I don't want I mean, you guys, I don't want to run out of time with you guys. We're already thirty five minutes in here. So so thanks for sticking in here. But in you, earlier, I think it was you, Mike. You you said that uh, you know what's working for you. I think you said you know being really goal oriented. Now I'm sure you guys are goal oriented, um, and I'm sure that you the people that you hire you make sure that they're goal oriented. How how often we, you know in terms of those individual one on one meetings when you have more as a group, you know how often do you go, hey Susie, listen, I know you wanted to do fifty deals, eighty what whatever, and make a hundred grand this year. You know, talk to me. Uh, how much? Because I, I mean, I I have to assume that's part of your value add there. I do. I probably do that more on an informal basis, but I probably do that more than anything. Hey, client, let's look at your numbers, and we sit down and talk about their numbers. Right. And I do it a lot with. Uh, we have a tiered commission split, and so as people get to next tiers, I'm always contacting them. Hey, you got to the next level, and and this is what your numbers are, and it's all about that. It's all about those numbers, and in those conversations. You also hear about the challenges they have. Yeah. So it's, it, it, I love those conversations because they're mostly positive, and uh, it's a way for me to communicate with team members. And in addition to that, you start talking about everything else to make them go more. Because some people say, "Oh my God, I'm so thrilled I'm there," and then other people say, "Yeah, that's my goal. Now I'm just going to raise my goal because I'm already at the goal I stated for the whole year." And we have many agents this year who are at that. So. Um, so, so yeah, so, so I do a lot of that. Okay, I, I, I figured that. I mean, I just intuitively, I felt like you probably did. Um, so you guys keep mentioning, right, that, that you know, you have a, a high caliber of person on your team, right? You, you, both of you said that yeah. a few times. Let's, t- let's re- quickly talk about recruiting, right? Uh, just a minute ago, you said, hey, many of the people are, you know, on our team are, are high achievers. They can build teams of their own. Um, how do you go about finding, uh, you know, the top talent or good talent for people to join your team? Well, I think, I think a, a couple ways, but the, and, and the reason I'm talking is because I do most of the <laughs> recruiting and, and onboarding of that, of that part of it. But a lot of it is, is finding the talent, um, a bartender with a great attitude, um, who's just has an opportunity to blow, you know, blow the roof off, um, there's one agent that we have that's just fantastic. And it's just being able to talent scout, being able to identify, you know, the, the, the right personalities and the, and the folks that are going to be hungry enough and have a strong work ethic. By the way, that's my tip. Bartenders are fantastic realtors. Um, if, if, you know, if you can get them. Um, and then other, other folks who've just watched our continued success year after year after year, and they call and ask, you know, Hey, what are you guys doing? And, um, if they're team players, if their personality type matches what we need, um, and if they're uh, sort of giver personalities versus taker personalities, if their first couple of questions are what's in it for me, mm-hmm. we probably don't want them. Right. If their first couple of questions are, you know, here's how I think, or not questions, but their their vision is, man, if I could come here, I could really help you guys take the city or da 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 then that's all day long who we want to add to the team. So I'm being able to put together a team of givers versus takers, um, I, I think – Again, talent scouting is what's really important. So if I were building a team, I would get coaching on. I would go and I'd try to learn on what makes a good team player and, and, and learn those, those items as you're building a team. And it just say we had, an, we had an agent on the team, probably a $6 million producer uh, in, a, in her own right without leads. And, but she, and she's a nice lady. She just had her own ways of doing things, and she wasn't able to follow the team way of doing it, and she was – trying to tell other agents on the team, you know, maybe we should do it this way and try to you know, oh, subvert us. Yeah. You know, that you, you can't get that person off your team quick enough. Yep. Because there was collateral damage after she left. Even though she didn't leave in a bad way, we, we sort of massaged that. But there was collateral damage with some of the other agents who, who said, well, maybe she had a point here or there. Blah, oh, blah, blah. toxic, and, toxic. 
So you, you have to, if any, if, if you don't get any, if you're trying to build a team and you don't get anything out of this hour long, uh, podcast, if there's somebody who isn't working with the team and is always contrary to everything you do, it doesn't matter if they sell $20 million a year, get rid of them. Yep. I have one your whole business could go down. Your whole business could go down. You know what? A little bit off topic here. Um, have you guys ever read uh, The Ultimate Sales Machine, Machine by Chet Holmes? No. You, you should pick it up. Ultimate Sales Machine. The, this guy runs you through a script uh, of finding good talent and how to – literally how to interview them. And, and what he will say is, you know, find good talent. He gets on a call and, like, no matter what, he goes, I don't think you're right. I don't think you have what it takes. And he's like, if that person walks away, that's not the person you want. He wants people to go, hey, you know what? You're you're completely wrong, man. You know, like he wants people to fight back. But anyhow, it's interesting. Um, so we had we had an agent on our team that we actually tried to get off the team. She wasn't producing, and she was a nice lady. And when we when we sort of fired her, she refused to accept the firing. <laughs> it was like an old Seinfeld episode. Right. But she refused to accept the firing. She said, "I'm not leaving." I've worked too hard to get here, and you're going to see. And don't you know the next year she doubled her business? There you go. That's that's me. So, and, s- sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, no, no that was it. That was the start. That okay. Was the end of it. So I want to know. I want to talk about traffic. You know, I, there are two things. I we don't have a time, but you know, traffic building and or list building. This is this is for you, Greg, because you're the tech guy. You know, somebody is listening to this. They're like, you know, absolutely 100. percent You know, I, I'm going to follow Greg's uh, uh, advice. I'm going to go out and build a couple niche websites. All the traffic that we get, I get, or you get, or anybody, right? It's either earned or it's bought. How, how in terms of getting traffic, do you have any hacks or tips that that you can share, Greg? In getting <clears throat> traffic to to your site, the, to the site. Uh, well, I mean, the first, the, well, I guess the trick was immediately was what I said, you know, earlier, which is, you know, creating that niche site to go hyper local, get the long tail, get, you know, get, go really deep on your website. I see way too many agents building out like a business page on Facebook, then never posting anything with it, which yeah. by the way, that is not a niche site. Um, that's a compliment to a niche site. So a niche site is actually calling a web developer or even Google has a thing called Google sites. It's free, free websites. So if you want to get started for free, you just go to Google, you go to the sites in the other tools, or you can Google it, and you'll find it. And then when you create the niche site, go hyper-local so that you become the expert of whatever development you live in, whatever, and, and really spend your weekend, spend a couple weeks. I mean, invest the time and effort. It will pay off long-term. Um, even if no one goes to the site, if you go on a listing presentation and say, hey, look, I have a website dedicated to this neighborhood, Guess who has more experience and more knowledge right. than the next two people they interview? So I, I just I can't stress that enough to go hyper local and then and then then build a business page, build a Twitter feed, build a YouTube channel around that site. Don't think that the Facebook business page is the site. Too many uh, people do that, and it's that's just a waste of time. Yeah, no, I agree. So you, so build a site, build and you and I would here's this is my opinion. You can you can oh, disagree. Go ahead, hello? hello, what are you there, guys? Yeah, you kind of cut out. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Here's what I was saying is, you know, you can go and build that that Tremont neighborhood site and then you can't, you know, building authority for when you meet somebody, but also, you know, putting together a a Facebook group for that site. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you're the you're the hub. You're the guy. Um, Yes. How how, what has your experience been in buying, you know, AdWords or Facebook ads? Um, you're actually pretty good. Um, again, you know, it just depends on what level you're at financially to support such right. an investment. So if you're getting started, don't feel like you can't do this because you can't spend 500 bucks on a, a pay-per-click ad on the side of, you know, Facebook and such. But I like Facebook because you can really drill down into, um, if somebody says they live in Tremont, if somebody says they work in the five air, you know, the five, um, businesses that are exist within Tremont. I mean, you can really go hyper or, I shouldn't use that word. You should you can really drill down on who you're advertising to. Yeah, yeah your target market. So I, I do like that. The pay per click absolutely does work, especially if you want to give it like Google juice, meaning like bump the SEO. Obviously, if you're throwing money at Google to make your website appear, throwing some money at them is probably going to help. Uh, I've never read that anywhere, but it just feels <laughs> like that would make sense. Um, and and we do see an uptick in the traffic. So again, once you you me- don't measure, you can't manage. So make sure you're measuring. 
the amount of unique visitors, not, not views, but unique visitors to your site. How many IP addresses are finding you? And when they find you, where are they finding you from? Are they, and by the way, don't forget about Bing. I know nobody bings anything, but a lot of computers are preloaded with that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and keep in mind, even if they only have 3% of the entire worldwide, I mean, like the worldwide internet traffic, you're, that's still millions of people. So I think there's a way that you can you can sneak in there with like Bing and, and like Ask Jeeves and really weird like submit your URL to multiple search engines. Don't I mean Google is very important, but as you get started, you know hit everything. Yeah, no, I agree. As well as you know, the, one of the things I, I you know I know this is your show, guys, or your episode, but you know there's a company. You know I always tell people anywhere you can get a free profile, go and put it up there. Go and put a unique free profile everywhere. And then there's have you ever heard of a company called Yext? Y E X T. Yeah, I saw. I just saw that the other day. I, yeah. I didn't really dive into it. it just, I mean, it it will syndicate your site to to again yeah. all these weird sites that you would never ever take time and and index your site to. So it's expensive though. Um. Yeah. So listen, guys. If I look at you, right? I mean, so Mike's out there. He's got this prestigious role as a lawyer. It wasn't his thing, but that's okay. You, you know, this prestigious role. You, Greg, you know, you had the premier job, corporate job at AT and T, the the job that everybody wanted. And all of a sudden, you guys throw in the towel and go, "Look, I'm going to go do my own thing. I'm going to I'm going to build a, a real estate company." And this is I want you both to answer this question because I'm I'm in, always intrigued. And I'll, Mike, I'll let you go first because Greg's been talking. You know, who, right. Mike, who has been a mentor to you, both in your per, either or or both professional or personal growth? Who has been a mentor to me? Um, I have, I have uh, people in my family that have been in businesses and have 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 been great sounding boards for everything I've done in life. Um, who's been a mentor to me? I think that the coach has been a good mentor. The, um, I guess I don't have a really good answer to that. No, I know that's that right. a great question. No, no, that's okay. I don't, I don't know that I have a, I don't know if I have a great answer for that because I've, I've taken a road that's sort of been different than other people in terms of, you know, starting in law, and then obviously all the people who were involved in law with me were good mentors for me to get out of it. Um, and then, you know, we had, I had a good manager in my first real estate office that, has, that, that really helped me in the beginning in terms of it was very important for me to learn my craft because I believe that the best lead generation system is to be a really good realtor. And if you're a really good realtor, people will refer you. And so I'll, I'll give my original manager some credit for that. Um, and uh, I guess that's, no, that's, no, that's great. I mean, look, here's, here's what I find. This, here's what I find, Mike, because I find that, you know, guys like you, they either have none and they just, they just were innate with talent and they went out and just, they were able to learn on their own, do it on their own, or they have a laundry list of, of people. So I, that's fine. You, you, you don't have a, you know, this, you're a, you're a self-made guy. Uh, I get it. Hey, what about you? What about you, Greg? I, I think my background, just uh, AT&T sales training, is, is pretty solid. So okay. I came into an industry that was, um, there really isn't any structure or guidance as far as sales is concerned. And so, you know, one of the, you know, one of the major concepts we have as a team is everybody does what they do well. Don't try, you know, so at AT&T, there were seven people in every account. So I didn't go install something. I didn't do the billing. I was the sales guy. So when I came to real estate and one human being is supposed to take photos, put the sign on the ground, negotiate, oh, by the way, they have buyers and sellers, that's a, you know, it, to, to me it didn't make sense. So I'd say what guided me was a lot of my experience through that, you know, uh, sales training that I had in corporate America, Dale Carnegie negotiate to win those classes that the company, you know, my corporate company paid for. I, I was able to take that and then plug it in to real estate, the real estate industry. So, so let me ask you about, and, and, and guys, we're going we're, we're gonna to be done in 10 minutes, but the 12 minutes, I just heard a little bit of a contradiction, uh, uh, Greg. So, you know, what I, when people have teams of your size, typically everything is siloed off, right? Buyer's agent, seller's agent, you know, everything's very, very siloed. Now you guys don't have that siloed uh, feature uh, in your, in your team. However, what you just said, right? If I go back to your AT&T days, um, it was very right. siloed, and but but the way you've built your business, it's not like that. W tell me no. why. Tell me why. Great, 
great clarification question. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, no, no. What we look at it as salespeople. If you're a realtor, you're a salesperson. You shouldn't be doing signs, photos. Yeah. I mean, you should be negotiating the contract. That's it. So, for example, I do all the technology piece. And Mike does not do that. If somebody has an issue, they go to Mike. It's, it's you know, a real challenging issue. Um, no, we have six full-time administrators that do the flyers, the postcards, all of that stuff. The, um, they submit the green sheets, which is our billing, you know, our internal paperwork to the company. None of that they have to bother themselves with. What they need to bother themselves with is picking up the phone and getting another listing or buyer. So uh, although we do keep people together as sales partners, we consider that one job. It's called, you know, sales. Um, we don't we don't segment a buyer and a seller separately. We feel that that's one cohesive relationship. I mean, as a salesperson, your job is to build a true relationship with a client, and and not like, oh, well, you're buying, so I can't talk to you, or wait, you're selling, so I can. It, you know that that's what I mean by that. Okay. Yeah. No. Right. That's fine. Um, all right, so listen, I always ask for a book recommendation. So, and I probably should have teed you guys up on this. I need to be better at that. Um, so hopefully you guys read, uh, and, and since you are Keller Williams folks, no Gary Keller books. It comes up, everybody wants to say MRE, like I'm sick of hearing that. Um, so here's the setup, guys. I'm an aspiring agent, I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Uh, As you guys rummage through I, your library right there. Yeah, I am. Can I? So I don't want to just like spin, spin stuff. Let me tell you that when I was an attorney, I read my life away, and I don't read sales books. I don't read them. I know my craft. I know my my business. I'm very good at it. I read journals. I read. I'm up to date on everything. I don't read books. Uh, so you you. You've now caught my other weakness in life. I don't read books. Huh. You know, yeah, you don't read sales books. You write them. Why don't you go? You should go write one, man. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I see. You know, successful guys like you f- end up doing. Um, what What about you, Greg? Do you read? Well, my real answer might get this audio book knocked off, but whatever. On Sunday, I read the Bible, and that's about it. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Well, listen, I will. I, let me just let me just tell the audience. I mentioned this book earlier, but the Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes is a great read. I suggest everybody go get it, and get, you can get a free copy on us. You know, just use our our link. You go to audibletrial dot com slash Super Agents Live and get a free copy of that. Now, look, guys. I always encourage my audience, if they've gotten anything out of this, and you guys have dropped a, a ton of nuggets here, but, but, uh, and I may p- take you up on that, that mic to come back and talk only about negotiation, but, you know, I always, awesome. enc- I always encourage my audience, if they've gotten anything out of this, reach back out to you guys and, and say thank you. And look, maybe somebody's, I know you guys have big, big plans in the works, and I, I, we didn't get to what your end game was, and I apologize for not asking that, but where can people find you to say thank you and or, you know, uh, uh, join your team? Uh, if they just go to EZ Sales Team, that's the letter E, the letter Z, salesteam.com. All our contact information there. Got it. Perfect. And and everybody, you know, look, I'm sure that uh, if you have a referral out to uh, Cleveland, Akron, Ohio, I'm sure that Mike and Greg would be happy to take that over. So, look, guys um, – and by the way, audience, everybody, all this stuff will be on the show notes. So you don't have to worry about remembering Easy Sales Team. Um, if that's a challenging for you, it'll be on the show notes. Just find um, Mike and, uh, and Greg Erlinger on, on uh, go, just go to Super Agents Live. All right. Hey, look, guys, I want to kick off the thank you train. You guys are very, very busy. You guys have you know tons of stuff going on. You have big plans for, for 2015. I appreciate both you guys carving out 60 minutes of your life to share with me in the audience. Man, it's been our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, let's keep in touch. Okay, great. See ya. Let's go. 